team, I've been thinking, machine intelligence is already better than us at so many things. What happens when it gets better than us at everything? Will it make our lives great or will it ruin us? On May the 6th, 2010, at 2.32 p.m., the stock market lost $1 trillion in under 30 minutes. A trader who popped out for coffee could have walked back with an empty bank account, all because of an AI. Today, a lot of buying and selling of stock is done by AI trading with other AI. And on this day, something went wrong. In the description, there's a video of a news reporter describing the crash in uniquely human terms. The reporter goes out of their way to describe the situation as if a human had made rational decisions based on market forces. It wasn't until after did they learn that humans had nothing to do with the situation. People weren't making rational decisions based on the market. A robot did it all. A bunch of AIs were simply following poorly designed rules and glitched the market. Here's another picture of two minutes worth of trading. There's one AI causing this up and down. It's trying to trick the other AI. Jump forward a few seconds in time and this AI crashed the system, generating a massive loss in the price and profiting by short. A human would not have been able to make decisions in a meaningful time frame to pull this off. And today I want to explore how AI did this and why so many people think AI will end us. That AI buying and selling shares is what they call artificial narrow intelligence. Basically AI good at a couple of things. And there's two other types of AI. Artificial general intelligence, which would be an AI genuinely as capable as you and I. And artificial super intelligence, which is AI on steroids. An example of this would be an AI as smart as you and I, only a hundred times faster. Which begs the question, how long until the fastest processor turns AI into artificial super intelligence? Some of the greatest researchers in AI have been asked this question and they think it's going to happen in our lifetimes. And that's a scary thought because there's generally two outcomes if this happens. Either just like every other piece of technology before has made our lives better, it will have the power to solve every problem we have. Cancer, death, time travel, space travel, and global war. Just like the AI that wiped $1 trillion off the stock market, it could do something that fundamentally ruins society. Something that kills us all wipes out humanity. I'm going to explain why the way we're creating AI is more likely to create an extreme outcome and put forward thinking as to how we can make sure it's a good one. The reason very smart people are legitimately afraid of AI is because we could succeed in building a singleton. A singleton is one AI that is fundamentally more intelligent than all of us. Humanity today is a super intelligence. It's what we call a collective super intelligence. The world we live in today is because of thousands of years of people building on other people's ideas. Both Einstein and Darwin stood on the shoulders of giants and contributed to our collective progression. This is completely different from how a singleton will work. Let me give you an analogy. Imagine we added 1,000 IQ points to every single person tomorrow. No one person would be exaggeratedly smarter than another. Thus, our collective intelligence would go through the roof and we'd reach utopia pretty fast and we'd all benefit. But imagine if only one person got a million IQ points. That would effectively be the difference between a singleton and a collective super intelligence. A singleton, unlike a collective, you have to be very careful about the beliefs you give it. Now picture a politician you completely hate. Say Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, or John Kerry. Now let me be frank here, the reason the world won't end if the politician you hate gets into power is because politicians have to work with other politicians in a democracy. Now that's not the same with an AI singleton. An AI with Trump's belief system would have absolute power to achieve what it wants. The common answer to this is we need to set the AI we build with a set of beliefs and values that benefit all humanity. But the reason I use the example of a politician with absolute power is because no matter which politician you think is perfect, there's always others who think they're not. No matter what values we add to an AI, there's always going to be people who disagree or are disadvantaged. Not to mention what we believe is right and just changes over time. Creating the right belief system is almost as hard as creating an AI. So how long will it take until an AI turns super? 
here's a breakdown of what the experts in the field say and here's a breakdown of what clickbait websites say. Considering experts tend to overestimate and websites tend to sensationalize, let's look at this objective. The brain has an estimated 10 petaflops of processing power. The supercomputer Titan has been pushed as hard as 17 petaflops. So a supercomputer is faster, albeit a lot less efficient. A brain synapse fires at about the speed of sound. Electric circuits travel about the speed of light, roughly a million times faster. So the actual limiting factor to reaching AI isn't processing speed, it's software. That's what makes it so hard to predict when AI will get here. If we only had to follow Moore's law, we know exactly the point at which AI would have run. The hardest part of building an AI is the algorithm. To drive this point home further, we know that humans can distinguish between a human face and a cat in a fraction of a second. Now, because we know that since synapses fire at the speed of sound, in a fraction of a second, your brain has only about 100 steps or 100 sequential synapses to make that call. We haven't discovered an algorithm yet that can distinguish between those two objects in less than 100 steps. Once we crack the algorithm issue, feeding it a bigger computer is the easy part. And this is why it'll be more likely that AI will be one of the extreme outcomes. If we make an AI as smart as us, feeding it all of our knowledge and processing power is the easy part. So it will quickly become super and won't be able to stop it. With multiple countries and companies competing to be the first, the first to build an AI, slowing down to make sure it's safe, won't be a priority for some. And this is a winner's takes all scenario. The first AI might just be our last. So what will an AI look like and why will its actions be capable of killing us? This is where it gets interesting because an ad looking up to a human has no comprehension of what we're capable of. Through the fact that we're the smartest collection of meat on this planet, we control the fate of so many animals. Whether rhinos and polar bears are around for the next 20 years isn't actually up to them. The rhino has zero say in whether they go extinct. Whether the white rhino is around tomorrow arguably has little impact on humanity achieving its goals. Many animals go extinct not because of our actions to kill them, but our inactions to save them. They just happen to be in the way of resources we needed and they were incapable of stopping us. Creating an AI would put us in the same position. This is where I want to introduce you to a new word, indifference. Not caring either way. When the AI wiped one trillion dollars off the stock market, it wasn't with malicious intent. It was just an unfortunate consequence of it completing a goal. The AI was indifferent to the consequences, but humans, we suffered the consequences. So how do we make sure this doesn't happen? Well, the simple answer is to raise our collective super intelligence. Just like putting the internet in everyone's hands, raised our collective intelligence. Putting an AI into everyone's hands would be an equivalent of adding 1,000 IQ points to every single human on Earth. In a later video, I want to explore that possibility how OpenAI might be taking the right approach to ensuring that we're not summoning a demon. Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Stephen Hawking, and a host of others think we might be awakening something so powerful we become irrelevant. And I guess this is the point. We've got one chance at this. So let's hope we do it right. Or it might just be the great filter.